Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can very quickly generate a master curve, a time temperature superposition master curve from different types of experimental data. So here's an example. This is DMA frequency sweeps at different temperatures. And uh, in the previous versions of M calibration, and this is something that was very easy to read in and work with, you get the data in here, and then to calibrate the material model to it, you just select the material model you want to work with. I'm going to pick Abacus linear elastic viscoelastic for my example. You can say you want 11 Prony series terms. You specify the time temperature superposition you want to use. And then you have the parameters here for the whole Prony series, the hyperelasticity or linear elasticity in this case, and the WLF parameters, which you can then calibrate manually or automatically all by once. Now, this turns out to be fine, but it's a little bit tricky. So we generated a new way to doing this even easier. And that's what I'm going to show you here today. So the first thing to do is to look at the experimental data that we have. Here is one of these curve uh, files that contains the frequency DMA data, frequency storage modulus, loss modulus, and temperature. And we have a number of these uh, files for different conditions. To use this in M calibration, we would uh, read in it and actually combine these files into one master file. So it has this information. The last column, look at that, 289, 289, and then the last height frequency, and then we basically has added the data at the next temperature. So we have one curve, but each temperature is one after another in this file. And that's the, all the DMA data that we have. And there's one column for temperature. So to use this in M calibration, we just go open M calibration and say load data file. And then we select the file that contains all of this uh, different uh, temperatures you can see in column here. And now we're going to ask M calibration to create the master curve for us from the information in the table. And then I can click on create TTS master curve here. And then I can select the initial guess for the WLF parameters that will be found. And also, also I can set the temperature at which I want this curve to be generated. So master curves can be shifted left and right depending on the temperature. I'm going to pick 293 for no particular reason in this time. You can also specify how the shifting should be done. Should it emphasize storage modulus? Should it emphasize loss modulus? Or a little bit of both. In this case, going to focus on the storage modulus. And I basically say, OK. And here's our master curve. So you generated the master curve, the frequency, engineering, the storage modulus, loss modulus. And the temperature column here all have 293, because it was shifted to that target temperature. I can now create a load case from this and read it into M calibration by clicking on that button. And here's the frequency versus storage modulus. There's the frequency versus loss modulus. We see there's some noise in the data, not all that atypical. This is pretty common for many materials. We can filter that out or sort of think about it. But the procedure is exactly what I showed here for generating a time temperature superposition storage modulus master curve. The next thing I want to show how you can do this for stress relaxation data. So here's my stress relaxation data. I have a file here. It's going to open this file. It contains information, time, engineering, strain, engineering, stress. And the last column here is just the information at the different temperatures. So it's again, I put all the, the, uh, the relaxation files one after another. And uh, you see there's a time point to zero, a time point to zero for each temperature. So that's how it should be structured in this file. Then I'm just going to start M calibration. I'm going to read in this file. So here's the file that contains this information. I can just plot it and log curve. We need to shift these now to make it into a master curve. We have all of these at different temperatures. And I simply going to click Create Master Curve here. Again, I can select what temperature I want this to be at. I'm going to make it minus 65 whatever you like, and then you specify the initial guess. And here are the results. This is the time temperature uh, position uh, master curve of stress relaxation versus time. I can create a load case from this. When I click that, I see it's a warning. It says when in M calibration, when you do stress relaxation, the first time point needs to be zero. So the software will fix this for us. And uh, here is the results. I say OK. The figure looks a little difficult to read here, so I'm going to improve the way the figure looks by making the x-axis and the y-axis log scale. And here is our master curve that we can use for any material model calibration that we like. 
Uh, one thing we can do uh, here as well, just to point out, there is some noise in this data here. The stress is the column that has the noise in it. I can very quickly uh, smooth out this and uh, reduce the noise if that is something you like to do. It, it may not be obvious that that's better, but you can do that if you like. I just smooth it out. I can then create another load case here and I let it fix it. And I say, OK, so now I have two versions of it, one the raw data and one that's a little bit cleaner uh, when I reduce the noise in the data a little bit. So that's uh, now useful for your calibration. And you can repeat this again for creep data at different temperatures, but I'm going to let that be an exercise for you. If you have any questions on how to do this new feature, let me know.